In this video, I'll show you how you can display a progress indicator in your Adobe Captivate eLearning project. Let's get started here. So, I got a message from Sharisha. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Sharisha writes, thank you, great video, Mr. Paul. Please explain how to create my own progress bar in all my slides to indicate in which slide I'm into without using navigation buttons or table of contents. Uh, I think I understand the message there. Uh, Sharisha, I typically don't use a progress bar per se because they tend to be something that, um, you know, people want to click on. Uh, but rather what I prefer to do is just to have a progress, progress indicator. And I'll show you how that's done. This is a really simple solution and it works with two system variables. So uh, you'll learn a couple things in this video, how to insert a system variable into an object or a shape or a text caption and also how to create this particular um, this particular element for your course. So I'm going to choose to use a shape in this uh, particular case here. Now I don't always put a progress indicator starting with the very first slide. Uh, there's a couple of choices here but I think once you're past your title slide and into the content uh, you can start using this particular interaction or, or element, if you will. So I'm just going to grab a, uh, a shape and I'm going to just draw a very simple shape here onto my page. Now, you're going to want to pick a spot on your page where you can know that, uh, you know, you're, you're relatively safe to know that nothing else later in the project is going to appear in that spot. Uh, in this particular uh, template, uh, down here is where the closed captioning would be, would appear, and this white space here is strictly reserved for any kind of navigation controls that I've created. In this instance, I have a uh, a right arrow and a back arrow for a, a next slide and back and previous slide button. Um, but there won't be anything else here uh, that I anticipate adding. But uh, you know, certainly you can customize that as you go. Now, what I need to do is, I don't want people to actually see the shape, so I'm going to go to my property panel, and I'm going to make the opacity of this shape zero, and if there was a stroke, I would make it zero as well. Fortunately, there's not, so I don't have to worry about that. So now I'm going to add those two variables I talked about. Uh, I'm going to double click on this. Alternatively, you can press F2, and that will get you into the editable text portion of this particular shape. And if you scroll down a little bit on your properties panel under the style tab, you'll see character information. And there's three little buttons that most people ignore. Uh, we're going to use the, the second one, and that's insert variable. And if you click on that button, it's going to bring up the insert variable interface here. Well, the first thing we're going to do is choose the type of variable that we're going to be working with. In this case, it's not a user variable, it's actually a system variable. So we're going to select that, and then we're going to select from our variables list. Now there's quite a few here, and like I said, we're looking for two. What we're looking for is, the first one will be CP info current slide. This variable keeps track of what slide number you're on. And by displaying that, you can uh, let users know that they're on slide number three or slide number four, etc. Um, I'm going to change the maximum length to three because I don't think there will ever be more than 999 slides in this particular course or template. And I'm going to click it. It's optional. You could leave it at 500 or 50 or whatever number you want. But uh, you know, to keep things nice and clean, I'm going to keep it at a maximum length of three. Now I'm going to click on OK, and that's going to add this big long uh, variable name. Now it puts two dollar signs around the name, but that's just to let, that's a visual cue for you to let you know that you've got a system variable there or a variable that's been set up. So now what I need to do is I need to make a decision. Do I want to use a slash like as in a displaying a fraction or do I want to use like an English word I think in this case just to keep it neat and clean I'm just going to use a little 
uh, I don't know if it's that backslash or forward slash. I don't recall. I'm going to hit another space. And I'm going to click on the insert variables button again. And this time we're looking for a similar uh, system variable, but it's not current slide. Uh, first of all, let me select system. What we're actually looking for is CP info slide count. Where is that? CP info, CP info slide count. There it is at the bottom there. And again, I'm going to make the same uh, maximum length setting of three characters and click on OK. So now I have this uh, object here on this slide. Now, like I said before, you could simply copy and paste this to all the slides where you want this progress indicator to appear. Uh, but there's another alternative that's a lot simpler. If you go to your timing panel with this particular object selected, you can change the display time for uh, for this particular object from specific time to rest of project. And now you don't need to worry about putting it on every single slide. It will automatically appear for the entire rest of the course. My advice would also be to check off the place object on top, unless there's a reason you would have other objects covering this on certain slides. Uh, this is probably a good safe bet here. And once that's done, that's basically it. So let's do a little preview of this course. And we'll just uh, take a look here at how it works. We'll just do project here. Like I said, I chose not to place that indicator on all of my slides or the beginning slides because I don't think it's necessary to let someone know that they're on slide one of one or slide one of 47. They just started the course. They know they're on slide one. Uh, let's go next and pass the introduction. There we go. So now we can see we're on. And you could even add the word slide in front if you wanted it to be a little more clear about where the user's at within the course. But as they progress through the course, this number, the first number will update with the current slide info, and they'll always have an idea of where they are within the course. Um, what I would like to say, though, is the original question that uh, Sharisha asked was um, how to do a progress bar. Now, if you think about it, you could have a series of different lengths of bars that would be not visible in output. And depending on what number was in this first number, you could write an advanced action that would be on entry of all slides that would check to see what slide number you're on and display the appropriate length of bar that you wanted to choose. So you could take it another step. I'm more of a fan of the simple approach, this little numbered uh, approach. I think it's fairly universal. Uh, but if you wanted something that didn't use, uh, you know, Western characters like I'm using here, certainly a progress bar or, you know, a bar that becomes longer and longer as you go through the course using uh, advanced actions written on enter of each slide could definitely work. I won't show you how to do that. It's a little bit more involved, but uh, I'll, I'll plant the seed and let you decide whether that's something you want to do. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.